everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am going to be doing the Author Tube Old B tag, which was created by Lindsay Puckett. Amazing idea, Lindsay. I had been thinking, like, should I update the Author Tube newbie tag? Literally the first video I ever made. So old now, it's borderline embarrassing. And Lindsay had the great idea. No, let's do an Old B tag. Because I feel a bit like an Author Tube grandma. And in fact, the first question on the tag is, how long have you been doing AuthorTube? And I have been on AuthorTube for three years and change. I started my channel on June 1st, 2017. I definitely feel like I have done a lot, seen a lot, and come a long way. So I love this tag. If you have been on AuthorTube for a while and you want to do this tag, please do. You are all officially tagged. So on to the rest of the questions. So the first one, how long have you had your channel? Three years and change. Two, what aspect of writing have you improved since joining? Can I say all of them? <laughs> but seriously, having this channel, like doing AuthorTube and having to kind of challenge myself to do specifically craft videos, which did not and still do not really come naturally to me. I have to teach myself how to teach certain topics because people want to hear about them. And doing that, going through that process of having to really critically engage on specific topics of craft or just putting on my thinking cap and trying to think, well, what have I learned and how can I talk about it has made me better at writing. I have improved multiple writing processes. I think if I had to really focus on a few, I've definitely improved at pacing and structure, I think. Part of that is that I've now written several more books since I started my channel and just writing whole ass books is always going to help and make a difference. But I've put myself through a lot of revision paces over the course of having this channel and I do think I've improved there. I definitely think I've improved at what I call line level sentence structure slash word choice. Not so much because of AuthorTube but because of everything I've gone through with multiple fantastic editors at two different publishing houses. Going through parts of dev edits, but specifically line edits and copy edits has made me a much stronger writer. And then I've tried to kind of pass on to you some of those experiences, like just forcing myself to take myself to task on crutch words has been huge. Crutch words, crutch phrases, thinking about echoes, that's been another one. I should actually make a whole video on that because that's something that I have two editors who just happen to have a pet peeve for echoes. And so I've really had to improve my writing there. And then, I mean, hopefully, I think I've improved in endings, question mark. I'm not gonna know until my next book comes out. It's the first book where I really feel confident in a particular way about the ending, fingers crossed. Um, I definitely would consider endings one of my deficit areas. Uh, I literally didn't do a video on endings until super recently because I wasn't super confident in it. So I genuinely hope I have improved at those. And actually the next question is, what are your biggest writing accomplishments since starting your channel? And honestly, my answer to that is writing and then selling my first thriller, The Ivies, to a big five publisher. And I mean, obviously, like, it's a huge accomplishment that I set a goal. I did the thing. I met the goal. And, you know, it was a career goal that I had had for a really long time. But it's not just that. It's that I genuinely think I learned something writing that book. So this kind of harkens back to question number two. I really think I leveled up as a writer on this book in particular. I'm really proud of it. I consider it a huge accomplishment. I love that I got to basically vlog the whole thing like from start to finish like this phase of my career like is on AuthorTube. It's a part of this channel. So yeah, generally I'm just really proud of my new direction, you know, that I kind of challenged myself to do something I literally never thought I could do. I remember years ago, and the friend I said it to, a friend who writes mysteries, really good mysteries, and I said I could never do that. And I did. And I think that's why it feels like such a huge accomplishment. Also, things can change. The thing that you'd never think you could write, well, four years later, you can do it. Things can always change. You can always level up your skills. And so I think that's why I'm so proud of it as an accomplishment because I, I genuinely think I've improved as a writer. So four is, has your drafting style, plotter, pantser, plancer, evolved since you began your channel? Yes. Um, I'm kind of one of the diehard pantsers of AuthorTube. The thing is, 
Pantsing is a spectrum. I prefer to talk about discovery writing in general. I've always been a roadmap or a headlights writer, less than kind of a true pantser in the sense that I know things before I start my book. And honestly, I think most pantsers are more planters. I think it's easier to fall in the middle. And this thing, I fall more in the middle than I ever have before. Cause the thing about writing a thriller, and this is the whole process that I showed on the channel that I went through on the channel, Yes, I'm still a pantser. I will sit down to write on a given day and I won't know anything beyond, okay, my character is here and my next guide post, my next spot on the map is this and my headlights can see ever so far ahead and I have to figure out today how to get there. And I still derive all of that joy from that kind of by the seat of the pants process. But with thrillers, I have more guide posts than I have in the past, just because I have to plot them backwards. And I definitely say with my previous books, both the retellings and the ones I wrote before that, that have not seen the light of day, uh, at least in two of the cases, I came up with late stage twists, like things for act three that had such a huge impact on the rest of the book that I did heavy revisions. And the thing is in a thriller, there's none of that. I know all of those big things in Act 3 going in because I find I can't write them unless I know all of that stuff. And thus it means there is definitely a little bit more planning, a little less not planning, but the process itself is definitely still pantsing or plantsing because I thrive from sitting down on a given day or going into a certain writing week not necessarily knowing what I'm doing and I, I enjoy that. And then just while we're on the subject of drafting style, I know this wasn't quite part of the question, but I think it's interesting. My actual literal drafting style has definitely changed since I started this channel. When I started this channel, I had successfully written three books by the process of every night at 10, I turn off the TV and I have a glass of wine and I write for a few hours and I slowly but surely write books. And then I sold a book and I got into kind of a more traditional publishing environment where you're writing on deadline. And sometimes, you know, older teens don't work. And so my literal drafting style has definitely evolved over the course of this channel. I have trained myself to get out of the house and use that to write. I've trained myself to have bigger word count days when needed. So I've definitely evolved a little bit in the, like the literal parts of the process. I also no longer drink red wine while I'm writing because I just can't take the calories. Honestly, I can't. it was a habit I could not afford to keep. So I, my literal drafting process has definitely changed a little bit. Number five, if you plan to publish, has your publishing path goals, trad, indie, or hybrid changed since joining? No, I'm, I'm in a particularly weird spot because I started this channel after having sold my debut novel. So I started trad, like already on the trad train, <laughs> like uh, on the train and it was going at such a speed that I couldn't really jump off of the train. And I'm continuing on that path. I'm kind of forging my way through that career path. And honestly, no regrets. I mean, you've, you've been here, you've seen it. I like being traditionally published. I The pros and cons just work for me. I like that I don't have to do everything, that there's like the space for writing, that I can concentrate on the things that I think I am good at. I like coming up with ideas and figuring out marketing angles and being commercial and writing the book and editing the book. And then obviously some marketing, but I like all of that stuff. And then I definitely like the perks. I'm still overwhelmed on a regular basis at like how far flung my book can be at times, just like the sheer number of libraries and bookstores and like readers it's found around the world. And that's through kind of my traditional publisher and the distribution that they have. And for the Ivies, like, honestly, it's my first experience with the big five. And I cannot wait to, well, to continue to go through it. I've already had so many really great things and new experiences being published by a big five. And so I'm still very much committed to this path. I feel like I have a decent handle on this path. I still am thinking of hybrid 
on a longer term basis, but it's ending up even more long term than I thought in large part because the Ivies is basically a career restart for me. I'm s completely switching genres and I'm all in on that genre. And it's a genre that really thrives in traditional publishing, much like YA, of course. And so I'm really digging my heels in there and I'm not in any rush to do the genres that I was considering doing for self-publishing, like YA urban fantasy, urban fantasy generally, or romance. So I, you know what? Long game planning, all different kinds of publishing are going to be there later. So yeah, I'm still, I mean, I feel like I'm strapped to that speeding train. Um, the, the train hasn't thrown me off yet, or in this metaphor, I guess the conductor hasn't thrown me off the train yet. So yeah, I, I'm still keen to see where it takes me. Number six is what is something writing or channel related you've learned the hard way? I thought of a few for this, but let's go with the almighty fickle YouTube algorithm. Well, there are of course some best practices and things that you can try and I will never pretend I'm not someone who's tried to figure out the YouTube algorithm and sometimes I do better than other times, but that hard lesson, that lesson learned the hard way is sometimes it is your favorite content, the content that you love, that you really enjoy putting together and maybe even that you thought this is gonna do well and it just doesn't. The YouTube algorithm is a mysterious animal. It does what it wants and you just kind of have to go with it and it's an ongoing frustrating thing. And this applies to you and to other people. I know in Lindsay's video she talked about kind of her hard lesson was that you don't just grow astronomically fast because YouTube. And yeah, because YouTube and I'm one of those people who I feel very lucky that I've had the growth that I've had. Some of it you can definitely trace back to specific things. Some of it's just lightning in a bottle, but both for myself and for others, I think it's deeply unfair. Certain people in channels and content that isn't growing the way that I certainly think it should because I think it's really, really good and it's like YouTube algorithm and then there's definitely content where I'm like, I guess. I guess that's a huge channel, sure. And you know, that's just kind of the way that it goes. YouTube is this weird and mysterious place. So the other hard lesson, it's hard to talk about, but I feel like it would be disingenuous of me not to say this because it was the first thing that I thought of when I saw this question. And that is the hard lesson of coming to terms with the fact that some people just aren't going to like you and that the bigger your channel gets, the more license people feel they have to talk about you. It's definitely hard. It's like that weird line of like, when do you become a public figure? Am I a public figure? It's very strange. But especially, yeah, honestly, it hurts, particularly in the community when I find out through the grapevine that there are people who don't like me because they think I'm stuck up or what have you. And it's definitely not how I see myself. And I, I think that's definitely the trick when you're platform grows but you still feel like the same person but like outside perception of you is what changes and like I just have to be honest that is definitely a hard lesson that I have learned because it's like I blinked and my channel got so much bigger than I ever expected it to. There's definitely a shift and like I get more hate comments than I used to. It kind of sucks but it is the way that it is and it's definitely a hard lesson that I have learned in my time on AuthorTube. So the seventh question is, in what ways has AuthorTube changed since you started it, your channel? I feel like it's definitely changed a lot. Just we've grown in size, which is really good. There are far more people on AuthorTube, which is great because I have seen a huge expansion of content and that's good. It's not just one AuthorTube being one thing with like how to's and advice videos. I love that now we have way more vlogs, kind of slice of life. This is my process, live streams. There's all sorts of different dynamic content from lots of different people who write lots of different things, who are pursuing different paths. It's like there's something for everyone. And I definitely think that's really good. I've personally also been heartened that there are more people who are pursuing traditional publishing or who are traditionally published who have channels now. So I feel a little bit less alone. But then, okay, so number eight is what is something that frustrates you about AuthorTube? And so building off of that last one, I think we're more fragmented than ever. And it can be a real challenge in terms of feeling a sense of community. But that's 
also just a natural progression because anytime a community grows and expands as it should organically, you're going to have more fragmentation. But because of that increased fragmentation, I think it leads to lots of interesting social politics that sometimes feel kind of icky. I personally, since we're talking about things that frustrate me, the trad versus indie divide frustrates me. It always has, but even so, more now, I definitely feel like there's an us versus them mentality, not from all people, not from all channels. I definitely don't feel it too much from the viewer side, but on the creator side, I definitely feel it. I know it's kind of like a lot for me to talk about that. I haven't really talked about it in many videos, but it's definitely something that I feel and I just have to be honest saying that it frustrates me, but I don't think it's like some horrific pervasive thing, but I, I do think it informs some of the social politics in AuthorTube and it can definitely be a little bit frustrating. And then the other thing that frustrates me, it's it's something that's really tricky to talk about because you kind of get into this territory of like, well, what is a side hustle and who has a right to do X, Y, Z? But I'll just say generally something that does frustrate me in author tube, sometimes, honestly, pretty rarely, but it still happens. And I'm sure it frustrates viewers as well. It's just that phenomenon that you see where someone like starts their platform, starts their author tube and gets a modicum of kind of success. And then they end up converting almost their entire channel into more of a sales channel. And it's about kind of pitching and selling things, especially courses. And that's just really not my style. So it's, it's just not something I'm the biggest fan of. So let's get a bit positive because number nine is what is your hope for the future of AuthorTube? Honestly, I just hope we continue to grow and evolve. I think it's good to have more people joining specifically. I hope to see a wider variety of channels. Part of this is just YouTube demographics, but we really do lean heavy on certain types of books and certain genres of books. So I just think it'd be interesting if we saw additional and more content from authors just doing different things. In addition to trad indie hybrid, definitely hope we see some more hybrid authors. That's def I think that's where there's kind of a deficit area but not just that, but just more genres and categories of what people are writing because there's some writing advice or writing process or kind of seeing someone grow on AuthorTube that you're going to get different things out of it when they're in a slightly different space. I'm definitely personally finding a ton of value exploring a new genre myself and kind of going in depth about that on the channel. And there aren't a lot of people on YouTube, at least, who do talk about writing thrillers. And I'm happy to create that content. But I think it'd be great if AuthorTube had people who write nonfiction with channels, if we had more middle grade writers on YouTube. There's a few, but why not more? If we had more sci-fi, and fantasy writers who went really deep into fantasy. We have sci-fi and fantasy writers, but like, why not more? Have them in different categories, some trad pub ones. Generally, I just hope that we grow and we evolve and do new things. Because generally, just like in the last couple of years, I've loved seeing the way that we've already evolved, all of the new voices. I love the new formats. I've really gotten into vlogs and live streams. And so I think, you know, those are great steps, which means we have more great steps ahead. So that's why I would just encourage people, if you're thinking of starting a channel, why not? Which the last question, number 10, is share some oldie wisdom for newbie author tubers. Honestly, it's the same advice I always give, <laughs> but it is tried and true advice, but I think it's especially relevant now because we do have more saturation of channels, but also YouTube itself as a platform has really evolved over the last couple of years, meaning it is more important than ever when you start a channel to really plan it out and think about it. Do definitely start, like don't let, oh my gosh, I have to plan, 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 hold you back from starting at all. But meaning be aware enough of kind of how how you want to approach your channel, how much time you can dedicate to your channel to know that you're going to start and be consistent and not give up because that is the biggest thing. Consistency is so, so important. And it's also really important that you don't skimp on the technical stuff. Your early videos are going to be super, super awkward. I wasn't comfortable in front of a camera for probably a good year and I just shot on my phone in the early days and it was totally fine. But the things that really made a difference, having a visually interesting, clean background, 
lighting, 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 lighting. Oh gosh, speaking of things I learned the hard way, how to light myself. I'm, I still, like every six months I'll go, I'll see a six month old video and go, your lighting's not very good. So this lighting, I'll probably, I probably won't think it's very good in six months either, but that's the thing. Lighting is very, very important. Being well lit, well framed, and then editing your videos is worth the time it takes to edit your videos. Yes, I post very, very long videos. It's not about them being short. It's about eliminating awkward pauses. It's about telling the viewers right at the front of the video what it's about and doing the best that you can to stay on topic. I have a rambly discussion style. That's me. But the number one thing I see in terms of kind of pitfalls of newer channels is they have really long drawn out intros. They either create one or they're just hemming and hawing. You have to have that editing piece so that you're concise you got to pull them in in those first 30 seconds to a minute so that they continue to watch your video. And by being thoughtful about what you are filming and editing it concisely, that's how you're going to get viewer engagement. Channels don't grow without viewer engagement, so you have to create that content so that it is engaging and high quality and people want to watch it. Don't be afraid to be stiff or awkward or mess up in the beginning. What's great about the beginning is you won't have as many viewers, so like it doesn't really matter. But always be pushing toward progress if you feel like you're a little bit awkward in front of the camera. I really, really was. My old stuff is so bad. I can't even stand it now. Think about kind of how you're holding your body. Are you comfortable? Does it help to look in the viewfinder or does it make it harder for you? Where is your eyeline? I mess up my eyeline all the time. How can you better prepare for your videos so that you can speak off the cuff? I find that off the cuff speaking is always going to feel more natural. It is harder to edit, but unless you can train yourself to read from a script and make it feel very warm and authentic, generally that isn't the way to go in my opinion. And so yeah, above all, be consistent. Once you start your channel, I know it's hard. I know that the algorithm is really, really fickle, but it's really important that you don't give up and engage with the community. There is a great community. Watch other videos, comment on videos, join the Facebook group. I will link to that down below. There is an AuthorTube Facebook group. Talk to other people. Don't be afraid to reach out to other AuthorTubers. If there are events, join those events. There's definitely some really great people in the community and it's through engagement that you kind of will find your place. Thank you to Lindsay for coming up with this tag. I really enjoyed making it. And as I mentioned at the start, if you want to do this tag, do this tag. You are tagged. If you've been on long enough that making another newbie video does not make sense, do the author old B tag. I've got the questions down below in the description box. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and I will make more kind of author to meta content. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.